Hi brothers and sisters, I hope you can hear me. Um, let me put this a bit closer. Here we go. So this video is going to be about um, Halloween and from the perspective of someone who was involved in witchcraft before coming to Christ. Um, just for a warning, there's going to be some quite heavy things I talk about. The Lord's given me quite a, a burden and uh, like a duty, I feel, to, to talk about these things um, to his people. So a little bit about my background is I was involved in the occult and Halloween, the, the history of Halloween is where there's all of the history of where people used to dress up like evil spirits um, to try and camouflage on that night because there was so much activity from evil spirits um, and the way that the townsfolks would ward them off would be to dress like them to camouflage like them and if they conformed like the evil spirits they were believed to be less likely to be targeted and messed with by the evil spirits. Now, as an ex-witch, I know that that night is very, very important for the kingdom of darkness. It's the time where the veil is thinnest. It's where you get all of your um, sorcerers, magicians, witches, warlocks, um, wizards, um, shamans, druids, you know, all of those spiritual people that are involved in um, the dark side. And, um, you know, what we were talking about recently in the Bible study was how the occult, the, the word the occult means hidden, right? So a lot of those people that do ceremonies on Halloween night, a lot of them don't know that they are aligning with the devil. I mean, I didn't know until I came to the Lord. The occult means hidden and, and sometimes that is hidden from the person doing it. Very, a lot of the time people are involved in the occult without even knowing it. And see, the enemy is like this. He tricks us. And so, Let's rewind it a little bit and I'll just share with you a little bit about my story. I was involved in witchcraft as a child, very young child. I asked the heir, and if you're a Christian you know that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. I asked the, the air, the, the universe, I asked anything to show me the truth. I didn't ask God particularly when I was a child. And I was led through these series of events of just getting more and more entangled in witchcraft because I thought that that was where I could find truth. Because that's why I thought that the, the, the realm that we can't see, which must happen, must exist, there must be more to life than this, I thought that that existed. And I, as a young child I delved really deeply into um, witchcraft. and. I also practiced dark magic, um, voodoo, and I've renounced all of these things. I, I did Ouija boards all the time, took them to school, got loads of people involved with them when I was young. I was very, very foolish and very, very willing to explore this realm at a young age. Now, this ended so badly for me. This ended up with me being completely terrified and terrorized it led me to seeing dark shadows walking around my door. Every time I looked at my door in my bedroom, I would see a, around a seven foot dark shadow silhouette moving across. I would see and I would be pushed down to the ground from above. I would feel um, a heavy force. One time it pushed me down to the ground. I, I had voices. I had condemnation. I wasn't aware of God, but I was aware of the devil at that point. 
And when I got involved in magic, it was too late, or so I thought. And I was told. <laughs> I was owned by the, the dark forces that I was inherently evil and there was nothing I could do about it. And I carried this condemnation as a child for a very long time because I was involved in witchcraft. It opened up doorways to me as a child that no child should open. And I was so nervous. I used to sleep at night time with the bed covers over me with a tiny hole to be able to breathe out of because I was so terrorized. I used to count every word that I said on my fingers. It was like a nervous twitch. And if I said enough words to have a space on this finger, then I was good. And then if I didn't, I was condemned. And there was just so much for my small child mind to deal with when I'd opened up that can of worms of witchcraft and magic. It's real it's real and believe me you don't want to be in a place where you get involved in that frivolously and sillily and then end up realizing what have I got involved in so I as a child threw away and burnt my tarot cards I mean I did tarot readings when I was little I, I was involved in so much of the occult at such a young age and all I can remember being an influence on me for dark things was we used to, me and a friend who practiced witchcraft together, we would go and see this lady and she was a Buddhist and we would go to her and I think we were around six and we would go to this Buddhist's house and this, this was kept from my memory for a very long time and we would do rituals with um, prayer beads and, and saying mantras, Buddhist mantras, I didn't know what I was saying. I think I tried to find it and it was something about um, nature worship and I mean that's where I ended up going. Uh, so I had the influence of a, of a lady doing a ritual, I had influence of things like Halloween, I remember me and my friend would make gravestones as in like paper ones and stick them on the wall at, uh, on Halloween night and sleep like this and you know just we were so consumed with the darkness. We were so silly as well, because when you're a child, you don't know what you're messing with. You really don't. And if you have parents that don't know that magic exists, they are lulled to sleep as well by the, by the devil, whilst the devil takes their children. And this is why I'm talking about Halloween and that I've got this heavy burden, because that was my childhood with magic. Then I got rid of all those things. And then I went as a, as a young adult, um, probably around 16, so a teenager, I got involved in what I thought was white magic and what I thought was, uh, I thought I was a, um, a light worker. That's what I called myself inside. I was like, I'm a light worker. I'm here to, um, oh, you don't even want to know what I believed. It was so, so nuts. Um, and so I got involved in tarot readings again as in doing them, <laughs> consulting, um, runes, uh, anyway, I just was involved in, in magic again, witchcraft again, but it was repackaged into something that was light and was good and it's to help people and wow was I wrong. The enemy chewed me up and spat me out. I was in this place of utter brokenness after I'd get, got involved with yoga, meditation, um, uh, psychedelic drugs, um, uh, yeah, all of these things whilst doing um, ritualistic things and I, there's just so much that I could go into but I don't want to focus too much on all of that but at the, by the end of it I was you know, well, I was friends with Satanists, I was friends with shamans, I was friends with Druids, I was friends with Wiccans, I was friends with, you know, pretty much people that thought they were really fairies, you know, I'm, I was like friends with like pretty much even physicists that would explain away reality. Just, I was friends with all realms of, of magic and basically different forms of the occult. Um, and I just thought it was all, you know, different ways that people experience 
reality and different ways that people have their own walks and uh, you know everyone's truth was subjective and I had no idea I was lost you know completely lost and I was going to be someone to advocate for um, ayahuasca down in Cornwall. I had friends with shaman energy healers up in Glastonbury and they wanted me to be an advocate for the rituals down in Cornwall and gathering basically a coven, gathering a group of people together to do energy healing and ayahuasca and psychedelics and different things to alter your mind. So I have a little bit of experience in all of these things. Now, when I came to the Lord, it's very simple. There is the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. You're either with Jesus or you're not with Jesus. And it made everything so much, well, everything made sense finally because I had the eyes of Christ and I realized just what I was involved in, just what I was going, going involved in and uh, sorry, I get quite passionate about it because it's just, it's really, it, it causes me a lot of, um, I think it's, I think it's righteous anger because there's so many people caught up in all of this that just think it's to help improve themselves and to improve the way that they treat others and to bring peace. And it's just, it's a false peace. It's a false peace. And um, the end of that is despair. Now, why am I talking about all of this? I'm talking about all of this in regards to Halloween because Halloween is a, a festival, a celebration, a time. Really, it's a massive spell night, a massive night of um, incantation and ceremonial. You know, like if you're involved in all of that stuff, you wait till this night for special and specific purposes. Now, because the veil is thinnest, and, and it is, and I, maybe it's because of all of the ritualistic stuff happening and so many people aligning with the kingdom of darkness, it gives it more power, I don't know. But you know how back in the day, people would dress in costumes to look like they are evil spirits, to camouflage, so they would conform to the evil to be left alone. Now, isn't that so true in our Christian walk? When we are a light, when we are Christ's, we are then attacked. I mean, I had no idea when I was involved in the occult that I was really riddled with demons, really riddled with so much darkness until I came to Christ and he filled me with his light and then those things were revealed and exposed for what they were. These energy, um, sorry, these, um, um, what's the word? Sorry, um, hmm. there's so much resistance for me getting this out. I don't know, it's just been pretty intense. Ah, yes, there's a very good point I wanted to make. Yeah, so going on to that, sorry. Um, so these uh, different forces that, the, that light workers believe are um, of light and good, um, spirit guides, that's the word, these spirit guides and different um, entities that the people in witchcraft, when they see them as light, they are not light, they are dark, they're all dark. Only when you come to Christ do they reveal their true colours and I've been in that and it's, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying to truly see what these entities, what these characters and personalities and things that are consulting you and telling you, what they truly are is absolutely pure evil, pure evil. Like, I've never, I've never experienced or known such hatred and, and wanting to tear you apart as I have when I've come to Christ and then those entities that I was dealing with before who were guiding me and, you know, showing me so much wisdom and and giving me dreams and prophecy and and leading me on this rabbit trail of destruction when i when i truly saw them for who they were in christ it was terrifying and the thing is if you are celebrating halloween you're aligning with those things you're aligning with the kingdom of darkness you're in fact going involved in their ritual now you might not know that so you know, 
that's the thing with the occult it's it's hidden knowledge it's hidden so many people that are involved in it are taken as fools and and then but not you brothers and sisters not you you are children of god you are not to align yourself with the enemy that's not it's not for you. That's not where you belong. You don't belong in, in playing games with something that is definitely not playing games. I mean, the devil is so evil. And the thing is, like, I've been, I know I never was a Satanist, as it were, but I align myself with Satan. Um, and you could say I was somewhat more dangerous because I appealed to people as the light side of Satan when I was involved in the New Age and witchcraft and, um, you know, light work and Reiki healing and all of that stuff. Now, I was friends with Satanists and one of them said to me one day, you know, to be initiated into his coven, his satanic coven, the way in which they did that, he told me that the ritual, what they did, and basically they would, they stripped him naked they tied him up in a stressed position, I think in like a bit of a fetal position, but on his feet, so he couldn't really move. And, and they tied him up and they blindfolded him and they whipped him very hard for a very long time until he came to this point where he was like out of his body, where he was in this hypnosis state. And this was so that he could invoke spirits willingly aligning with the devil so that he could have knowledge and power ultimately to feed pride he wouldn't say that but it was so he had knowledge and power now he's willingly doing that they willingly do that they willingly they willingly put themselves and the the group in a traumatic experience inflict trauma to fracture the person and allow a gateway through for the demonic to possess the person. Now they're willingly doing it, but Satanists do that to children. They do that to children. And when you are invested in the devil, when you are putting all of your energy and time and devotion, and I mean they are devoted, when you're doing that, and you know that on Halloween night is the night where you probably will get the most investment, most return, the most reward. The outcome will be most likely to do what you want. Just think about how many children are going through that on Halloween night. Now there's on the surface of you dressing your children up and taking them out and knocking on doors and getting sweets and it's all lovely but you're part of a ceremony of dark magic and that's the truth there is so much evil in this world and on halloween night we can't just pretend like it's all fun and games because it's not you know the Lord was speaking to me today a lot about your will, your free will. And I remember when I was being trained by some witches who were hedge witches and they were also Reiki practitioners, energy healers, as well as shamans and um, ayahuasca. They did ayahuasca ceremonies and did energy healing during those ceremonies. They, you know, they were many things <laughs> and I came under them and they started teaching me more and opening me up more to more yeah you, you know and one time when they were doing Reiki on me and I was learning to read auras and you know they said that they saw my um, spirit guide they described it exactly how I know my, or I knew my spirit guide, guides to look like. And they said to me, they're here telling me that I need to help align your chakra about free will. 
they want to help you activate completely your own free will to them. You know, I was so deceived and I was like, great working on that area of my chakras and doing mantras and different things to align with what now I know as demons. Um, but the Lord put it into my remembrance today about it being about my free will. That's what they were after. They were after my total and utter will. My will. There is power in our will. In man's free will. God's given us free will. Do we align our will with the devil or do we align our will with God? And whoever we align with is who will use us. You know how the Lord is so, such a gentleman. The Lord is just so beautiful. He will never force himself on anyone. No, that is not our Lord. He waits for you at the door, for you to knock and he opens. What does the devil do? The devil is persistently at your door knocking, knocking, knocking. Oh, maybe this person at the door is okay. Maybe they, they're dressed nice. They're dressed as an angel. Maybe I'll open the door to them. No, no. See, this whole thing is a mockery. You have children who the devil is trying to claim to take to hell, embodying the character of the devil coming to your door, knocking on your door and expecting you to give him an offering, to give him a sacrifice, to bow down at him and join in with his games. It's, it's just so evil, it's so evil and, you know, I understand that those of you that haven't been involved in things like the occult or witchcraft, you probably, you might not have even known, you just thought, oh, it's just fun and games. But the root of this, the root of it, the, the history of this is evil and the, the very essence of it on that night is so evil, so evil. Even if there are shamans or Wiccans or, you know, energy healers or white witches or you know people that think that they're doing good and they're doing good rituals and they're doing ceremonies to love they don't know who they're worshiping the satanists do but the others don't they think that they worship well i thought i was worshiping the universe you know people think that they're worshiping mother earth gaia you know trees whatever worshiping nature but when you are not worshiping the one true creator God, our Lord. If you're not looking to Jesus and him, what are you looking at? And the Lord made it very clear to me that I was looking at doctrines of demons and I was looking at just, I was doing the devil's work. When I wasn't with the Lord, I was doing the devil's work. I was leading people into this like, beautiful time of light on the merry way to hell. That's where I was going and that's where I was taking people with me when it came to working on yourself and... So, I think that's all I wanted to say about Halloween. It's, it's the analogy there of how people would dress up like demons and try and conform so they wouldn't get messed with as much that is a massive lie of the devil because the ones that don't get messed with as much they're already his don't align yourself with the devil so we are going to meet as a church um, I know a lot of you guys are from different places so maybe just <laughs> unplug your doorbell I don't know or hand out tracks I don't know but just spend some time with us in prayer if you can um, on Sunday evening you know this is going to be you know how the Lord's been doing a sifting process this is going to be a really interesting Halloween 
because it's on the Lord's Day. It's on the day where people go to church. Now, are the Christians going to worship God in the morning and then align themselves with the devil in the evening? Who's going to do that? And, and can you do that? Can you? So join us on a Sunday evening in prayer. We're all meeting at 6.30 and we're going to do a night of prayer. Um, because, yeah, this, this week's been tough for a lot of us. You know, there's been so much activity um, from the enemy that we've all been under it. So we could do with praying for one another and lifting each other up in this time. So God bless you all and I'll see you next time. Bye.